Hi YouTube, I'm just going to give you some basic figure drawing tips in this video. Um, when I was at university I used to have to do life drawing and because I was always quite a detailed drawer it always used to take me ages to do a figure. Quite often somebody would be doing like a two or three minute pose and I would just get the head done and then they would move on to the next pose. Um, and then one of my tutors gave me this um, tip about drawing using ovals. So this is just about kind of trying to get the figure in as quickly as possible uh, and then you can start kind of adding detail to it afterwards. So to get the, the basic figure in you can see I use ovals like this and I don't just try drawing the ovals really neatly I kind of do them quite uh, sketchy and you can almost do like a lot of ovals in one go and that, that gives you your kind of proportions of your main figure. Um, if you're trying to draw this figure again sideways on you'll see like the oval through the chest area instead of being um, a long oval becomes more of a circle because it's foreshortened because you're looking at them sideways same with the hips the oval through the hips becomes a circle as well um, when you're doing the leg ovals they're exactly the same um, but the angle changes uh, same with the arms so if this person is facing um, to the left here you can see that you've got the arm faces backwards like that, the elbow points backwards, um, whereas the knee um, points forwards. So the you have to adjust your angles accordingly to make that work. Um, okay, once you've got your main kind of figure in, then you can start darkening your outside lines. Um, so obviously if you're drawing a nude, it's going to be different to if you're drawing somebody with clothes on. If you're drawing somebody with clothes on, you can start putting in a lot of the lines of the clothes and things. Um, on this one, I'm just going to show you like how to kind of refine the outside edge line, basically. So this is why it's useful if you've done your ovals and you haven't just done perfect smooth ovals. If you've done quite a few ovals kind of overlapping each other, it means at this point you can pick like the line of best fit and you can get your um, the correct line that works basically for your particular figure that you're doing. So you can see here I'm just going around just adding some of the main kind of shapes on and do you see how like the original faint ovals don't really matter so much after you do this because it's the darker lines that show up more so as long as you've kept your initial lines quite pale it doesn't matter you can then go in and refine it just with darker lines uh, and again this hasn't taken long so if you're trying to draw somebody out in the real world like say you've got somebody waiting at a bus stop or something you can um, get them in really quickly here I'm just putting lines through the ovals that's another thing that people do sometimes they draw lines um, even before they draw the ovals just to give them angles uh, and that can help as well so sorry this uh, sideways person isn't showing up very well because I haven't um, darkened it yet but I'll darken it a bit later right if you're trying to do somebody in a sitting position um, you can see here the oval through the chest is the same the head the body and the hips is the same this is going to be a person like sitting um, facing us so the tops of the arms as well they can be the same same length and everything um, but then obviously what happens with somebody who's sitting down the legs are coming towards you so they're foreshortened um, they could be completely foreshortened and just become circles overlapping the um, the oval where the hips are incidentally it's always worth overlapping your ovals um, and once you get used to this technique it, you can just apply it to anybody really okay you can see the lower legs remain the same length it's just the top ones that are foreshortened right so the chest was exactly the same hips were exactly the same um, the main body was exactly the same and yeah the tops of the arms as well same so it's just like the lower parts of the arms and the upper parts of the legs that are foreshortened everything else basically stays the same you might have to change some angles so I change the angles through the lower legs um, they're much more angled okay um, I'm then going to darken all of the lines of this guy who sat down so I'll speed this up because it's exactly the same really as the guy that I did um, stood up just 
literally going over the outside edges just to refine them a bit. Okay, at this point I decided to do another standing up figure, um, and this time I'm going to turn it into a skeleton. Um, this is something I would really recommend for any of you who are just starting out figure drawing. Um, if you can get yourself a human skeleton, um, you know, like one of those uh, plastic models, that's what I've got. Um, or if you can just get yourself some photographs of a human skeleton and just really kind of study them for quite a long time and maybe, you know, draw some from the images or from uh, a real kind of anatomical model. Um, once you get used to how all the bones and things work, it really can help your figure drawing. I know a lot of you will be kind of going, oh, I don't want anything to do with human skeletons, they're horrible. But um, if you could sort of face the fact that they're in all of us and um, conquer your fears of the skeleton and just uh, have a go, you'll find actually they're really kind of interesting. I, I really like them because there's a lot of interesting kind of shapes to a lot of the bones and the skull and everything. Um, so you can see here, I just kind of rough in all the bones initially. And uh, I'm just doing this from memory at this point um, because I've done so many now that I can just do it. And that, again, that helps you. Like if you do lots of them, you realize how everything has to go. And then um, it's just in your head and you can just use it whenever you want. Okay, so once he's in, now I'm starting to darken up all the lines just to make him show up a little bit more. Um, I mean, obviously you could go in there and you could you could shade it all as well. And then you could, you know, add watercolour washers or something over the top if you wanted to. But this is just me kind of doing a, a quick demonstration just to give you some ideas really about drawing figures so obviously if I ever needed to do like a photo realistic figure um, I'd spend a lot more time on it and I, I would really kind of concentrate on getting all the proportions right I would certainly work from photographs not just from my mind like this um, you can see like some of my proportions on the figures are not perfect but this was really just to give you an idea of the technique that I use when I'm doing figure drawing and things Okay, just uh, refining some of the ribs there as well. So obviously if you've got all the time in the world to draw a figure, um, you probably wouldn't do it like this. This is just a quick technique. Um, like I say, especially good for like if you're doing life drawing or something like that, where, you know, somebody says, okay, we're going to do a three minute pose. And like three minutes is no time at all. It goes past so quickly. So if you can use this kind of oval technique to get your main proportions and your main kind of figure in initially um, and you could do that in about you know under a minute then it gives you the other two minutes to kind of refine your outside lines and things like that and add a bit of shading as well if you um, have got enough time left okay so you can see on this guy here um, I just am putting some clothes on him um, just roughly just to show you how you could kind of build it up um, yeah, all of the faint lines that you do for all your ovals and things, they just kind of disappear. You don't even have to kind of rub them out. They just disappear underneath your darker lines that you put on over the top. Um, but it is just remembering to keep your initial lines really pale. Uh, and then it doesn't matter so much. And then all your shading and things you could do over the top of this if you need to. Okay, don't be afraid to um, refine any lines if you need to. Um, rub some out and adjust things as you go along. Okay, hands. Um, a lot of people struggle with hands. You can treat them in a very similar way using this kind of oval technique. So if you think of the palm of your hand as being slightly more circular, get that in. And then um, each kind of section of the thumb or the fingers, you just do as a, an oval, um, gradually getting smaller towards the um, fingertips. And then you can just go around and refine the lines. Um, if you need to do a hand that is, you know, more bent like this one, um, you can see you, you're just then adjusting the ovals um, to match the various angles um, through the fingers. Uh, and then you just treat it in exactly the same way. Darken it up a little bit once you've finished. OK, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been helpful to you. Um, hit subscribe to see more of my art videos in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.